right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants event. My name is Joe Goreski, and I'll be your host for today. Happy World Ocean Week, everyone. We are well uh, into our week-long series in partnership with the Explorers Club, uh, celebrating our ocean around the world, talking to amazing scientists and researchers and documentary filmmakers, conservationists. It's, uh, it's been an absolute blast so far. We started the day yesterday with the deep sea, and today we're focusing on amazing marine life. So we started with Cali this morning with sea turtles. We have Pablo hanging out with us, who's going to take us into the world of penguins. Uh, and then we have octopus uh, to wrap up the morning. Then we have a special event this afternoon with Fabian Cousteau at 1 p.m. Eastern, which should be a great one. There's the link down here, exploringbytheseat.com. If you want to dive into the events, register to tune in live, watch the recordings. You might even be able to find a camera spot uh, left in some of the events. So take a moment uh, and check those out there. So as I mentioned, penguins. In fact, there's a penguin palace set up at the uh, Explorers Club. We'll have to share some pictures of that later. But we've got Pablo uh, Boborglu joining us. He can often be found on the beach in Patagonia, Argentina, as he works to protect breeding colonies of Magellanic penguins. Uh, Pablo is the founder and president of Global Penguin Society, an international science-based conservation coalition that protects the world's penguin species. So since 1989, he's been working in the field of marine conservation, focusing on different aspects of ecology, of management, of conservation, of seabirds, of course, with a special emphasis on the penguins. So I'm going to do a little view switch here and bring uh, Popey front and center with us. So here we go. Popey, so glad to have, have you joining us today. Hello, Joe. Thank you so much for that nice introduction. And thanks to everybody that is joining us today. All right. Amazing. Well, we've got your presentation queued up. While you're presenting, I'm going to pull together a Kahoot quiz. Uh, but if you want, I'll bring in the presentation and you can get rolling. Excellent. Excellent. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us in this amazing online classroom. I am thrilled to be with all of you today. And in this presentation, I want to share with you some of the main conservation issues that the penguins are facing globally right now. And I also want to share some of the challenges and also the accomplishments that we've been able to deliver in the last few years. So, um, but before that, I want to share a little bit how, I, why I work on penguins. And I think it was my grandmother that uh, when I was a small boy, she used to tell me very nice stories about her visits to see the penguins a hundred years ago in the place where I currently live now, in the southern of Argentina, in Patagonia. And I think that her stories were very important for me because they allowed me to connect with nature. When I was an adolescent, I was shocked by the fact that 40,000 penguins died per year in the area where I live due to oil spills. So in this picture, uh, you can see this, is, this was taken 30 years ago, and I am rehabilitating an oil penguin. Uh, there was a big oil spill. Uh, we, we rescued the penguins in that moment. But then I decided to go to the university to have more tools to be and more efficient to help penguins. And then later on, the first time I visited a penguin colony, I was really shocked. I was connected to them, and I realized that I had to dedicate my life to their conservation. So let's dive now into the penguin's world. There are 18 different species of penguins that breed across islands and continents throughout the southern hemisphere. Unfortunately, half of them are considered threatened right now. So let me show you the world from the penguin perspective, which is with Antarctica in its center. Penguins have colonies there, also in Australia and New Zealand, in South Africa and Namibia, and in four countries in South America. And the yellow arrow indicates the place where I am based and where I also work in Argentina. So contrary to the common belief that all penguins live on ice and in Antarctica, there are only four species of penguins that breed that are more linked to those environments, including these funny ugly penguins that you can see in the image. But most of the penguins, they live outside of Antarctica. They are temperate penguins, like this humble chick that is hugging a cactus in the desertic area in coastal Peru. And we even have a tropical penguin, the Galapagos penguin, that lives in Ecuador in, on the Galapagos Islands, and they live in lava caves. And I don't know if you knew, 
that there are also penguins living in the forest. I guess, can you find the penguin in the picture? Don't look up because of course they don't fly. And if you take a look at the lower right corner, you will see our penguin there. They, these are the Fjordland penguins. They live in very thick forests in the south of New Zealand. And it's very difficult to work with them because it's hard even to find them. <laughs> and in addition to that, penguins have a dual life in the ocean and also on land. And they accumulate threats in both environments. They're very sensitive to all the alterations in their habitats, including climate change, fisheries, pollution, and also human disturbance. So climate change in Antarctica, it is changing the, the pattern of ice formation, the timing of ice formation and melting, and that affects the habitat that penguins need to eat, but also to breathe. But climate change is also, in general, changing the availability of food, the distribution of food in the ocean, and particularly for the penguins, it is, it is changing the food close to the penguin colonies when chicks are small, which is the moment where food is mostly needed. And in this image, uh, we see a penguin in a nest during a very hot day. Uh, uh, climate change is also uh, increasing the frequency of heat waves and the duration of heat waves, and penguins are covered by feathers, so they, cannot, they can eliminate the heat only panting like dogs, as you can see in the video, and also through the flippers and legs. But sometimes the heat is so high that we have uh, penguins that are very healthy that die due to the heat in those days. And climate change has also been triggering uh, wildfires. And one of the issues with penguins is that they don't recognize the fire as a threat. So they don't run away, they stay in their nests and they die like the one that you can see in the image. Fisheries are also a problem for penguins because they compete for food. They fish in the same areas where penguins are looking for food. And also sometimes penguins die because they get entangled in the fishing nets during the fishing operations. Um, oil spills have been a problem for penguins, but fortunately now this uh, problem has been reduced and now we have a problem with plastic pollution. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes penguins get entangled in big pieces of plastics or they swallow plastics that can harm them and even kill them. So to help penguins cope with all these threats, we created the Global Penguin Society, which is an international organization that helps penguins through research, science, habitat protection, and also our education program. In, uh, in terms of science, we work in different countries. And in New Zealand, for example, we are strengthening our program in conservation and also research, studying these, these penguins. And in the next video, Ursula, one of our representatives, is sharing some of the results with us. So we use satellite trackers to follow their pre mold dispersal. And we found that birds traveled up to 2,500 kilometers away, covering distances of close to 7,000 kilometers. That's halfway to Antarctica. No other crested penguin species known to travel that far during this time of their annual cycle. So this is very useful because this information allows us to know where do we need to create protected areas or where do penguins get into come into conflict with with human uh, activities uh, a big part of our work is also to create protected areas and um, <coughs> sorry and uh, we do not only create them so far we have been able to protect 32 million acres of habitat in the ocean and on land but we also design management plans working with the communities landowners and the government to decide how are we going to use these areas. In these protected areas, we also benefit many other terrestrial and marine animals. And this is important because that generates a lot of education opportunities. And through ecotourism, it generates jobs and sources of income for the regional economies in these developing countries. But there is no possible conservation if we do not engage and educate the communities. And we have a massive education program uh, 
with local and also global audiences where we take kids to visit penguin colonies for the first time in their lives. And in the next video, you will see one of our actions where we take adolescents, children, and members of the community to remove plastics from penguin areas. So penguins have a key role in ocean conservation because of their ecological importance. But in addition, people have a natural emotional connection, connection with penguins. So penguins can be the perfect tool to inspire these major changes in the actions and in the choices and behavior of businessmen, decision makers, and the international communities. So far, through our actions, we have been able to benefit two and a half million penguins worldwide. We have done a lot, but there's still so much more to be done. So we will continue working very hard to benefit penguins, the ocean, and the entire planet. Thank you very, very much. All right. Poby, that was awesome. Thank you so much. I'm just going to do a quick uh, camera change here. There we go. And so while you were presenting, I pulled together a little Kahoot quiz. So we're going to see how well the students were paying attention. Excellent. Uh, and we're going to see who comes out on top. So I'm going to share a quick link here. Uh, there it is, kahoot.it. If you head there on your tablet, uh, a phone, um, your teacher could put it up at the front of the classroom if you don't have one-to-one -one technology, it's going to ask you for a PIN code. And lucky for you, uh, I have one of those handy right here, right now. So I'm just going to open up my share screen here. There we go. And let's bring up that uh, Kahoot code for you. There we go. Okay, so today's code is 3045342. So if you put that in, it'll bring you in, it'll give you a name. And then the way it's gonna roll today, there's gonna be four questions, 20 seconds for each question. If you get the answer right, you're getting some points. If you get it right and you do it quickly, you get even more points. If you get it wrong, but you did it really fast, the fastest ever, nothing. We got nothing for you. You got to get that answer right. Uh, and then if you do it quickly, you get those bonus points as well. So there we go. Hopefully you can see all the students joining us. They've got fun names nice. here, like the Glad Jaguar, the Smart Gator, the Proud Camel. Um, yeah. So there we go. We're going to give a, maybe 30 more seconds to get more students squared away. Um, if you have a device, you could scan the QR code. That might be a bit easier for you. Um, so lots of ways to join us, or you can just yell the answer out at the front of your classroom. That would be fun too. Whatever, you're, whatever works. We've already got over 125 students hanging out with us here mm -hmm. in the quiz, which is great. It's not slowing down, so we're gonna have to give it a few more seconds and wait till the names start to, to slow down a little bit for us. All right, I think now's a good time. So, well, maybe, maybe a couple more seconds. Yeah. yeah, the Arctic giraffe. That's strange. I don't yeah. think you'd see too many, too many giraffes hanging out in the Arctic. All right, that looks good. Okay, so I think a few might just join us behind the scenes, but we should get rolling because we want to have lots of Q&A time. So our first question coming up front and center was, how many species of penguin are there? Was it 5, 8, 16, or 21? All right. Well, 
Uh, we're going to have to take a little bit of a mulligan on that one. I was pulling it together behind the scenes and heard 16, but it's actually 18. So I guess everybody's right uh, who chose there. 16 is the closest answer, but there's actually 18 species. So uh, that was just me hearing it wrong while uh, Popey was presenting. So sorry about that, everyone. Let's see if we get things going on the, on the next question. We've got Fast Lizard in first place, but let's see if we can get things back on track. So is it true or false that half of penguin species are threatened? Answers are coming in nice and fast. About five more seconds on the clock. All right, good job crew. Most of our group went with about half of penguin species are under threat. And as we learned, it's from our, our activities. All right, what did that do to our leaderboard? The lovely elephant. The mm -hmm. lovely elephant is in first place. Let's go to our next question. We've got another true and false. Most penguin species are found in Antarctica. Is that true or false? Oh, we got them. We got them. I know when you think of penguins, you think Antarctica, you exactly. think snowy cold. But how about how many species are in Antarctica? Like four. Wow. And 14 outside. Wow. Because there's just so many, right? You yeah, see Antarctica, exactly. you think penguins, but only four species actually in Antarctica and the rest uh, outside. Very cool. And I think it's because of the movies and, and cartoons that they're always about penguins in Antarctica. A hundred percent. There we go. We, we fooled a few students with that one. What did that do to our board? The dandy stork. We did not fool the dandy stork. Uh, okay. Final question. What is hurting penguins? What activities are hurting penguins? Is it fisheries? Is it climate change? Is it plastics or is it all of the above? What activities, what issues are affecting penguins? A couple more seconds on the clock to get that answer in. All right, good job crew. All of the above from fisheries to climate change to plastics are all having impacts on our penguin uh, populations around the world, not just in Antarctica. Exactly. <laughs> all right, let's check out the podium. In third place, we have the Wonder Bison. Good job to the Wonder Bison. In second place, the Creative Eagle. And holding down that top spot, what's happening here? We have the magic macaw sneaking in. They appeared, pulled yeah, themselves out of a hat, and there they are. Good stuff. All right, let's switch gears. Let's switch to a little Q&A action. So we have classrooms joining us in camera spots. We have way more classrooms tuning in live via YouTube from across North America. So get your introductions into the chat. Get your questions into the chat. Uh, I'm going to switch the camera view because nobody is here to hang out with me. Everybody's here for uh, our speaker today. So let's put him back front and center. There we go. Uh, and let's start with a YouTube question. So um, all right, we're going to have to put a pause on that. I have greetings, but no YouTube questions to start. So let's get those questions into the YouTube. I see lots of people tuning in live. Uh, so don't be shy. But let's uh, go to one of our camera classrooms. So joining us in a camera spot, let's make sure I have the right event pulled up there. There it is. Okay, let's start off with, let's go to Ms. Bateman's crew. They are third graders in Kitchener, Ontario. So joining us in Canada, let's bring her in. Let's do the virtual quiz. Hi. So um, one student was asking, what is your favorite type of penguin? <laughs> so one of the penguins that I find very kind of uh, interesting, and um, it's the yellow-eyed penguin. It is a species that only live in New Zealand. Uh, they have yellow eyes, like the name says, and there are only 1,700 pairs in all the planet. Uh, and I find them very, you know, I don't know, magnetic for some reason. But I also love the crested penguins. You know, they look crazy with these yellow feathers and orange feathers. 
And uh, I like the behavior of the rock hopper penguins. They are all the time very active, jumping from one place to another one. Uh, I think they are all different and they all have great things to, to appreciate. All right, great question. So we do have some uh, YouTube questions coming in now. So let's start off with one here. Um, oh, where did that one go? There it is. Mr. Toledo's class is joining us and they're wondering how big can a penguin get? What's the biggest species? Yeah, so the, the, the biggest one is the emperor penguin in Antarctica. They can be 90 pounds. <laughs> they can have 90 pounds, pounds and they can be three feet tall. So within the, among the 18 different species, there is a wide variety of sizes and body weights, as you can see. And the, the, the smallest penguin is the little blue fairy penguin in South Australia and New Zealand. They're very small, only one pound. They only weigh one, one pound and they're one feet tall. Uh, so they're very, very small and, and fragile. So as you can see within the group, you have all shapes and colors and sizes. All right, awesome. Let's take a little trip to Toronto. Mrs. Fallis' group is joining us. Let's bring them in, front and center. How are we doing, Toronto? Hi, good, good. Um, how do baby penguins know who their mother and father are when they mm -hmm. all look the same? Very, very interesting. One of the key things is that at some point when the chicks are big enough, they stay with other chicks in, uh, in the colony because the chicks are not waterproof. They cannot go into the ocean. So the parents go get some food and then parents come back. But then when the parents come, you have a big group of chicks. And the parents, they recognize their chicks by the sound they make, you know? So the, the, the sound, is the vocalization is very, very important to them. So we know that they don't smell very well. The sense of smell is not very good, but the, the, sense, the hearing is really, really good. And that's how they recognize each other. All right, great question. Mrs. Oaks crew is joining us, I believe from Minnesota uh, in the US. And they're wondering why do no penguins live in the Northern, Northern hemisphere and would it be possible for them to with the mm. conditions? So there is a theory that says that penguins did not go into the Northern hemisphere because in the Northern hemisphere, you have bigger carnivores like bears and you know, like different kinds of, of mammals that were predators and you didn't have them in the Southern hemisphere particularly in the areas where penguins evolved, because they evolved in predator-free islands, New Zealand, and many islands surrounding Antarctica without no predators at all. So uh, now we are working in a, in a research in, in which we study the DNA of the penguins that are existing right now, and also the, the fossil DNA. So we found out that the origin of penguins was in New Zealand, a predator-free island, and from New Zealand, then they started to conquer other areas surrounding Antarctica. But it looks like penguins were originated in New Zealand and not in Australia. All right. Very cool. We're going to take a little trip to Missouri now. Farmington, Missouri, we've got a crew joining us, a summer school crew. Let's bring them in front and center. How are we doing, summer schoolers? Hi. 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 Um, what is the most aggressive uh, penguin, like the meanest one? So the most aggressive species of penguins. So in, in general, um, the, the species that evolve or live in, in areas without predators, they are more like relaxed and peaceful. But some species of penguins are really aggressive because they need to cope with predators. Like in, southern, in, in South America, for example, they are all the time dealing with pumas and cougars and foxes. Uh, and skunks and all different predators. So they, like the Magellanic penguin, one of the works I work most, is very aggressive. They are small, they look very, you know, like friendly and nice, but they are not, they don't like to be touched. They grab your skin and then they shake it until they hurt you. They fight also among each other, but they need to be kind of aggressive to defend their chicks and their partners against predators. So those are the, the penguins that are, are, are more aggressive. And of course, uh, the African penguin is another species that also has to deal with, with really bright predators. All right, great question. Sue, back to our YouTube. We have more questions coming in. A few questions about penguins in the water. So one being about the speed they can swim at and one being how long uh, 
can a penguin stay underwater? So one of the, the biggest record is the emperor penguin because they have this adaptation to live in Antarctica and they are big. So they have big adaptations to, to, to dive and to swim. Uh, for example, an emperor penguin, they can dive 500 meters, which would be like 1,500. About 1,500, yeah. Yeah, feet, uh, feet yeah. right? 1,500 feet, which is a lot. So, but to do that, they, they can stay 23 minutes under the water without breathing. And that is amazing because if you compare that to a human being, a well-trained human being, we can hold our breath for four minutes. So compare four minutes if you are well-trained with 23 minutes. Those, those are the amazing adaptations of, of these animals. All right, excellent. Uh, Mr. Steltman's crew, we're gonna take a little trip back to Canada. Let's bring them in. Mr. Steltman's fourth graders, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Hi. Hi. All right, Mason, stand right here. Right there, ask your question. Um, what is the, how do um, macaroni penguin, penguins get the judge on their head? The yellow feathers and the, he wants to know about the yellow feathers on the macaroni penguin. The macaroni. On, on the head of it. Okay, so like you get different species of penguins and some of them they have the feathers that are, they have specific size and a specific length, uh, like in the macaroni penguin is one of the penguins with the biggest crest of all, you know, with this yellowish and orange and also some of the penguins they have red eyes or orange and red bills. The color of those parts it comes from the pigmentation of the of their diet, of what they eat. If they eat krill or different kinds of crustaceans, like shrimp, similar to shrimp, those animals they give the colors. So that paints somehow the crest and their eyes and the bills as well. That's why they are so surprising and they look like aliens, you know. All right, very cool. Kind of like the blue-footed booby in the Galapagos. Exactly. The more they're catching that fish, the more pigment is transferred exactly. into their feet. Very cool. Uh, okay, we had a penguin question here. Oh, okay. This is Miss Robinson's crew, and they would like to know, are penguins deep divers? Are they hunting deep in the water? Where are they hunting? So they, they yeah, like, um, you mean how deep do they go? Mm -hmm. Yes. So like, you have to imagine that a penguin is a, is a seabird. So they spend most time, most part of their lives in the ocean. They wouldn't, we wouldn't see them on land if it wasn't for their need to have a dry place to lay the eggs and, and raise their cheeks. Otherwise, we wouldn't see them. So they spend like 75, 80% of their lives in the ocean. So they have a lot of adaptations. For example, right now in the Southern Hemisphere, we are in the winter. So they are not breathing right now. And they're spending six months in the ocean. They don't even touch the coast if they don't need them. They only go to the coast if they are sick or tired or oil. But if they are okay, they will stay in the ocean six months. They even sleep floating because among between the feathers, they have air. So they float like corks and they sleep like that. And then when they are hungry, they dive and they follow the currents. They eat, they eat in preparation for the next breeding season. All right, living that sea life. Uh, who do we have to visit? We're going to go to New York this time, so maybe not too far from us, downtown New York at the Explorers Club. Uh, we've got Miss Cottrell's group hanging out with us. Let's bring them in, some fifth graders. Let's see how loud they can be. Mm -hmm. Hey, fifth graders. Oh, we got to get that mute. There we go. Hi. Sorry about that. That's better. <laughs> so we saw on one slide that there were penguins in forests, and we were wondering why penguins live in the forest. So, uh, so different. As you can see, they live in different places. Places like Antarctica, where we don't have any tree, no plant at all, so they don't have any kind of protection at all. So other penguins, they live in the vegetation that is available, sometimes small bushes, so they nest under the bushes in desertic areas. And even they, they, um, they, um, they make burrows, you know, they dig burrows under the ground, so they live in those kind of little caves. But in, the, in New Zealand, in the south of New Zealand, these penguins 
are used to live in the forest, which is very thick, and it is also useful for them to avoid being attacked by predators. So they live in nests that are under logs or rocks in very steep slopes in the mountains of New Zealand. And it is very, they are very different to other penguins because in general, penguins get together. They make colonies to breed. So you find them all together. In the case of the Fjordland penguins in the forest, you don't even see them and you don't have big colonies. So you might have a big, big place with only 10 nests. And it's even hard, it's hard to find them, you know, even. So you can have to pay attention to the way they vocalize and then you follow and then you find them in the middle of the forest. Uh, but this is like a, a way they found to avoid being found and attacked by predators. All right, smart, using that tree coverage. Hmm. Okay, um, let's grab another question from YouTube and then we'll get, uh, we'll see what's going on with our camera classroom, see if we have another question or two. So we still have some time. Let's go to, yeah, is one you want to grab? I yeah. see that, uh, you know, Roy is asking, uh, the question is from MR. Uh, Mr. Tall's class. Ah, uh, Tall's class. What is the oldest penguin? This is very interesting because um, the only way to know the age of a penguin is when we ban them when they are chicks. So we put them stainless steel bands that don't affect them. So it's the only way to know how old are them when we find them again. And we are finding penguins that are 32, 33 years old. Uh, this is very funny because when we go with our students that are 20, 21, the penguin is much older than them. And, uh, and those penguins, for some pen in some cases, we follow them for all their lives. So we call them the VIPs, the very important penguins, because those are the ones that we've been tracking and we know everything about all, how many chicks they had, how many times they came to the same nest, and we know everything. And those are very important penguins because they, thanks to them, we know a lot about penguins. All right, we're gonna go to our camera classrooms in a sec, but. I thought this question was interesting here on YouTube. We talked about many of the, the threats facing penguins and this class here is wondering, are, is poaching or hunting an issue? So it used to be a, a problem egging uh, in the 1940, 1950 in places like South Africa, South America, egging, egging was a big thing. Like they collected 8 million eggs of African penguin and that helped to the decline of the species now. Um, in, in Peru, in some cases, the humble penguins were also captured to eat. In some cases, they got stuck in the nets, and then since the penguin was dead, they, they ate them. Uh, now we're not having this problem. I mean, it's not like direct mortality. They're not killing them to eat. But we have a problem with illegal traffic of penguins because there are, in Asia, new um, shopping malls that are opening, and they have aquariums, and they all want penguins. So some countries are trying to steal or buy penguins illegally, uh, removing them from the wild. And that is a big problem that shouldn't be happening. All right. Not cool at all. Mm. Um, okay. We have some time for a few more camera groups. So if you want to give me a wave in your classroom, if you have a follow-up question, uh, and we'll visit a few groups. So, well, of course, the, everyone's waving, which is great. That means that they're excited about penguins. So let's see. Let's try a lightning round, see how many penguin questions we can do. So let's start off with Mr. Stubman's group. There you go. Do the penguins have any predators? Yes. Yes, they do have predators. Thanks for the questions. They have predators, but it depends on what kind of penguin and depends on where they live. Like, for example, in the ocean, they can be eaten by sea lions, different kind of elephant seals, seals, by sharks in some cases, leopard seals, for example, and also killer whales, orca. Uh, and, but when penguins come on land, they are also affected by predators that are on land. Like it could be leopards in Africa, it could be pumas, foxes. Um, you, you have in, that, in some places, one of the problems is that we have humans, we have introduced animals, you know, uh, and penguins, they live for millions of years without those predators. But out of the blue, now we are bringing new animals to live with the penguins. Like there are millions of possums that have been introduced into New Zealand and they are eating all kinds of birds, including the penguin chicks. So that is a problem because penguins are not able to adapt and, and defend themselves quickly. All right. Sliding across the board, let's go to Missouri. Oh, what's the most endangered type of penguin? 
Sorry? Uh, who's in the most trouble? Which penguin species is the most in danger? So the, the most in danger right now, is, I would say three. The African penguin population was 2.2 million. There were 2.2 million adults 100 years ago, and now there are 20,000. The population really collapsed. Then you have the, Gal the Galapagos penguin with less than 2,000 pairs, but that was a population that was always small. But now climate change is really increasing the problems for them because, they're, because of the lack of food sometimes. And sometimes, they, since there's no food, they decide to skip breeding. They, don't, they, skip, the, they, they skip the breeding season. They just don't nest. And, and the other one is the yellow-eyed penguin that I mentioned before because the population is so small and they live in very few places. So that if somebody, something happens in those places, most of the population will be affected. So I would say that those three I like the, the, the ones that need more protection right now. All right. Thanks, Missouri. Let's head to our New York crew, our fifth graders. Hi. Here comes someone. Uh, which, uh, which species of penguin lives the longest? So, so far, what we know is that the Magellanic penguins would live up to 35 years old. Uh, which is really, really, really a lot. And the most interesting thing is that they keep on breathing. They keep on having raising chicks, even if they are old. I mean, they are healthy and they are fit and they are athletic. They go, they go into the ocean. These penguins, uh, to give you an idea, they can swim per year 10,000 miles. Wow. So if you calculate how much they swim in their lifetimes, it is like going around the planet 12 times diving, which is amazing because we're talking about an animal that is really, really short. So uh, these penguins are amazing and they really conquered the oceans. All right. Very cool. Continuing our lightning round, Miss Bateman's crew. Hello. So yes, I think you just answered one of ours. Uh, my class was wondering how long penguins live, so you just you just answered you. that. You muted from the meeting. And um, they were also wondering what was the first species yeah, of penguin meeting. that was discovered. <laughs> so very very, so interesting. very very interesting. Because what we know now is that the navigators, the explorers, like five centuries ago, they were navigating up here in the northern hemisphere. And they discover a bird that couldn't fly, and they call that bird penguin. You know, so they describe that penguin, and then they went and continue exploring in the southern hemisphere. And they thought they were when they found the penguins in the southern hemisphere, they said, "Oh, these are the same penguins we found up north," but they had no relation at all. The sad story is that the the great auk, the original penguin up here, went extinct, but now. Let's say that the penguins that we know now are not the original penguins. <laughs> um, yeah, and that, that, that is the, the story. And of course, I bought like antique engravings of 250 years ago. Uh, and that is interesting because in those times, they thought that penguins more, they were more related to fish because of the way they move in the ocean. They, were, they are so graceful. So when you see the engravings, instead of having feathers, they painted them with fish scales. Uh, so in the descriptions, you can see that they didn't know exactly that they were birds, you know. Um, but of course, uh, as you say, uh, one of the first descriptions came from uh, the African penguin, you know, in, in, in the eight, early 18th century. All right. And one last trip to Toronto. Let's see if they have cool. a follow-up for us. Hi. Uh, Noah has a question for you. Move up. Move up. Ask the question. What does penguins eat? What do they eat? Yeah. So it also depends on, on where they live. For example, the, the ones that live in Antarctica, they eat what we call krill, which is a very tiny animal, orange. It's like a small shrimp, you know, very, very tiny. But uh, they eat that because it, it's very nutritious. The other penguins, they eat whatever they can eat, like small pilchards, sardines, anchovies. They eat squid, small squid, uh, different kinds of crustaceans like shrimp that I mentioned, uh, small octopuses. So they eat whatever they can, they can swallow, basically. <laughs> All right, very cool. Thank you. So 
Let me get the demo to that time. Let me tuck our group away. I'm going to switch the camera to me just briefly uh, as we're wrapping up the event. Here we go. So a huge shout out to all of our classrooms, whether you were in a camera spot, whether you were uh, joining us live via YouTube. Thank you for the great questions. Thank you for playing along in the Kahoot with us. That was a ton of fun. I want to give a shout out to the Explorers Club. We are hanging out in downtown New York at the Explorers Club. It is World Ocean Week, so there's great in-person events uh, as well as these live virtual education events. So I will share a link if you want to explore more, explorers.org. And then if you're in the New York area, check out the events and you can see the World Ocean Week uh, events that are coming up. Of course, if you want to tune into something later this week, you can do that there, exploringbytheseat.com and find all the events coming up under special events or backslash Ocean Week. And of course, we want to learn more about penguins. So head over to global, uh, globalpenguinsociety.org uh, and learn all about the work uh, that Popey is doing as well as uh, penguin species around the world. Very, very cool. And I mentioned there's a penguin palace downstairs oh, set up nice. just for uh, this weekend. I'll have to share some pictures on social media so you can see the penguin palace uh, that has been set up here. Let's change that camera view one more time. There we go. Uh, Poby, it was so great to have you live. We've done this so many times, but it's always virtually from far distances. So it's nice to have you close enough to reach out and touch. Just like that. There we go. Uh, so close. So let me bring in our camera classrooms. Nice and loud. A big good button. Thank you. We sign off today. Let's bring them in. Bring them in. Bye. 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 Bye.